Hey there, and welcome to the Confident Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Brooks. Join me as I sit down and chat with co-hosts, friends, and carefully curated guests and talk about all the things that empower you to become your best and most confident self. So let's get started. Hey there, and welcome back. Today, I'm joined by my friend and host of the Live by Design podcast, Kate House. Kate and I instantly connected over our shared passion for empowering women to become the woman they're meant to be and confidently create a life that they absolutely love. Kate's purpose in life is to help others release overwhelm, get unstuck, and finally take the action to launch them in the direction of their dreams. In this episode, we're going to talk about everything from our transformational journeys to imposter syndrome, people-pleasing, failure and hitting rock bottom and so 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 much more so i know i'm excited kate's excited and i hope you're excited to join us so let's dive in hey rachel i am so excited for this conversation with you today i am too i we've been chatting back and forth and we know that we've been wanting to do this for quite some time and finally our schedules have allowed us that time so that we can just really dive into these conversations. And I know we have an incredible just series of conversations and topics that we're going to talk about today. So I'm super excited. Yeah, it is so fun. I'm I'm always saying how grateful I am. I always anticipated with hosting a podcast, like loving the community that would be created and the the cool silver lining to podcasting that I didn't realize going into it, like back in 2020, baby podcaster Kate, was that I would get to make these connections with other women podcasters. And I always have these like pinch me moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I get to hang out over my lunch break with Rachel. Like how cool is this? <laughs> exactly. And that's the cool thing. Like I, when I see a guest on my calendar, I just get so lit because it's like, I get to share just conversation and connection, which just brings so much joy to my heart. And knowing that we have the space that we both provide these podcasts to have these incredible conversations on. And so that's something that When I look at it, I'm like, oh, this is going to be an incredible day because the conversations are never, never a disappointment. They light me up. And that's our goal, even with our listeners, to really provide that for them as well. Yeah. I know when I first started listening to podcasts, I was like a brand new yoga instructor and I spent more money on gas than I did making money from the classes I taught. But I was like, you know what? Let me just get out there. Let me just like get all the weird words out of my mouth so I could figure out how exactly to teach like a, a really lovely yoga class. And that's when I discovered podcasts. I would put them on in the car because I was driving all over the Western suburbs of Chicago at the time. And it was it was just such a cool way to learn, to be inspired, to feel connected. There are women that I listen to, other podcasters, where I'm like, I feel like they're my best friend, even though they probably have no idea that I exist because I've been listening to their shows for so long. And so, I, yeah, I'm really excited today. So Rachel and I have something really fun in store for you guys because we are dropping this episode as a part one and a part two on our show. So Rach, for anyone who's listening and they're tuning into this part of the conversation from the Live by Design podcast. Will you just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're all about? Yes. So those who don't know me, and of course, if you're listening on my podcast, the Confident Woman podcast, of course, you know me. So we're going to introduce Kate too. But for those who don't, I'm Rachel Brooks. I am a published author, podcaster, and founder of The Confident Woman. So The Confident Woman is a lifestyle media brand that we aim to educate, empower, and equip women with the tools, resources, and community to go out there and create a life they absolutely love. And so how we go about doing that is really getting clear on who we are, what we want, and then we believe it, we achieve it, and we become it. And that is really the internal journey. And so it's just a beautiful, beautiful uh, process to watch our women just transform and watch them, you know, come into our programs, to our community, to our courses and everything and just be like, okay, I'm here now what? And then just watching them, you know, go out there and live as you would say life by design. And they're stepping fully into their purpose. They've found a way to intertwine their passions with their calling to creating a life that they absolutely love from the inside out. And that means thriving communities, boosting their confidence, uh, healthy relationships that are just soaring and thriving. And they feel at the top of their game. And I think when we're at that place in our life, you know, really that is that highest peak of confidence, right? Like we can take on and become and do anything in this world. And it's really about the strength 
strength of our foundation, again, from the inner to the outer and everything in between. And that's really our goal into the confident woman, which is really, again, to empower that woman to become that version of themselves. Oh, I love that, Rachel. I get like goosebumps as you talk about that. I'm like here for you guys can't see me, but I'm like praise hands all the way. (laughs) Yes to all of this. Yes. Oh my gosh. It really has been a beautiful blessing. And to be honest, like how it all kind of came to fruition and and about is through my own transformation journey. Mm -hmm. And so I share a lot of that in my award-winning book, which is Chasing Perfection, A Journey to Healing, Fitness, and Self-Love. And I mentioned that because it's like, when I wrote my story, I, to be honest, I wrote it for me Mm because I wanted to own that and be like, this is my story. It's no longer defining me. This is just a part of me and a part of who I was. And I remember at this point in my life, I was like, do I share this with others? Like, what is the goal and the intention behind that? And I was like, if I could just help one other person. It made my struggles and my, you know, challenges worth it. And for me to have the blood, sweat and tears poured into the pages of my book and now being received by countless humans around the world, those who have read it have been like, you have no idea that was me too. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it helps to close that gap and bring us together in community through our stories, through our experiences. And that was really the birth of the podcast too, because I wanted to unite women from all over the world and have these conversations that for those that are listening can be like, oh my gosh, if that person did it too, I can too. There's hope. A light at the end of the tunnel and my struggles and my challenges do have a purpose. And it's about building that confidence and those stepping stones to know that this this life is for you too, but you have to take action today and do something about it. Oh, I love that. Yeah. We have a saying around here. We say nothing changes if nothing changes. Mm-hmm. And it's so true, right? Like we get to have agency in our lives. and But a lot of that hinges on taking action. And sometimes it's like, there's this Ed Milet quote that I love. And I heard him on a podcast like years ago. I wish I could even remember what the podcast was, but I can't. But I remember that was Ed Milet. And he said, imperfect action beats perfect in action every time. And I literally like had that written on a post-it next to my screen on my computer for years because I was like, I need that reminder because like with your book, with perfectionism, right? Like for me, perfectionism kept me stuck for so long. Like I felt like, you know, I can't be a podcaster until I can do it perfectly. Right. And then I learned, at least in my podcasting journey, like there's so much value in showing up and learning through the act of doing. Now, certainly like if you're a pilot, please don't do that. (laughs) Or like a surgeon, don't do that. But like for podcasting, it's a very low, like if this fails, like it's not really a big deal. Right. (laughs) And so I was like, okay, I'm going to take a course on podcasting. I remember like nursing my youngest and just reading through this course on my phone, like night after night. And I was like, okay, I think I know what to do ish. Like, let's just try. And I remember recording the first like three episodes of my show. Like I had my fancy microphone all set up, didn't set the input correctly, totally recorded it on like the crummy little built-in mic on my laptop. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go with it because I'm never going to get the gumption up to re-record these episodes with like the perfect mic, right? Like, and I've never done that again because I learned, right? And so Mm -hmm. sometimes we just have to show up and we have to listen to those little heart tugs and And the confidence for me and the empowerment comes from showing up and doing it kind of messy and just continuing like that commitment over and over and over again. And eventually you get to a point where you're like, oh, okay, this isn't so scary anymore. Like, wow, look how far you can come with just a little bit of effort every single day. Has that kind of been your experience, Rachel, with like letting go of that perfectionism and getting into movement and action? Very much so. I kind of consider myself like a my former version because I was like my life before I figured things out and reclaimed my power (laughs) and said, listen, this is we're not doing that anymore. And in my former version of myself, I was quite the opposite. It was just striving, striving, striving for this constant chase of the unattainable carrot of, you know, perfection and, you know, perfection in in the terms of how I was showing up, how I looked, how I presented myself, like everything had to look from the outside, very perfect, polished and, Mm -hmm. and poised and put together in all of that 
exhaustion and uh, strife of trying to chase something that's not realistic eventually just led me to like burning out to a point of hitting rock bottom physically, mentally, emotionally, and having that fortitude to just be like, what am I doing? Like, why, why, you know? Um, And so I had to get really just clear with myself and figure out how I got there, why, I was doing the things that I was doing, which eventually led me to where I was. And then now as I was like rediscovering and rebuilding and reclaiming and doing all the re, you know, all the the things to do again, because what I had learned in that process, as you mentioned about failure is I just learned now at this point, I didn't consider myself a failure. Now that was an old story and a belief that I would tell myself because if I didn't get the results, that just meant try harder, push harder, do more, repeat, Mm -hmm. do it, do it, do it. Right. And so as uh, you know, where they say insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. But that was that constant chase of, of getting everything perfect and polished because I, to be honest, was afraid of being seen. Mm -hmm. I was afraid of seeing this big old hot mess that I, one, didn't know how to process it. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. There was a lot of that stuff. And, and so from the outside, I wanted to look put together, but on the inside, I was screaming a big old mess. Mm. And so I share that because through these failures and these lessons, it's actually now about that implied action, about taking that imperfect, messy action Mm -hmm. and showing up and taking today as your measuring stick from yesterday. And it's no longer that big, great divide, like this is who I have to be. Oh my gosh, this is where I'm at today. So how do I look like I'm faking it till you're making it kind of thing. And, you know, to be honest, I did a very good job at it. (laughs) I did it for, for quite some time because it was almost a program default setting. Mm -hmm. And I didn't learn that until I was actually working writing my book and writing my book shined light in so many of those areas that I was just like, wow. So how else am I showing up? And the more I started showing up differently, I started connecting differently. I started acting differently. I started becoming a different version. And that difference allowed me to connect to others in a more vulnerable, relatable way. And through that relatability and vulnerability, this authentic version of myself started showing up. And the more I stepped into her, I was like, ooh, I like her a lot better. (laughs) It's a lot, lot less stress, a lot less overwhelm. And it's about taking those everyday actions, as you implied, to commit to bettering yourself day in and day out. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what we do, what I do. And I know we're going to have this incredible conversation talking about that stuff. Because if you're, (laughs) if those of you that are listening are like, but how? Because this chase, the struggle, oh my gosh, this imposter syndrome, this, uh, I, I don't feel ready. I'm so ill prepared, right? All those stories, all that BS, all those lies that you're telling yourself is exactly why you're at the point of where you are in your life. Mm-hmm. And there's not anything good or bad about it. It's just now accepting, like, yeah, you know. That's right. I mean, this is where I'm at. And that was exactly the conversation I had. And I had to accept and say, well, I'm not done making excuses and and trying to figure things out. Let's just accept today is that's no longer me. I'm going to make a conscious decision to do things differently. Mm -hmm. And that one conversation was the turning point in my life was the moment I choose to do something different. Mm, Yes. I love that, Rachel, because it's so much about creating that awareness, right? Like once you have the awareness around it, then you can start to implement those shifts really purposefully. And, you know, we're only human. We don't know what we don't know. And so it's so easy to be so hard on ourselves, (laughs) you know, like we, at least for me, I always had these very high standards for myself. I joke that I'm a recovering perfectionist because like it's a lifelong journey for me so far (laughs) because I slip back into it sometimes, but now I have the awareness around it. And I'm able to be like, oh, it's happening again. (laughs) I'm like holding myself to this impossible standard, right? And it's like, no, Kate, like you have awareness around it. You've recognized that this old pattern is coming back and now we're going to release it. And I had this uh, conversation with, I think it was Eva Rodriguez on my podcast a while ago. And she was talking about this. um, I found this to be so freeing, this idea that these thoughts that we're having, these these self-limiting beliefs, right? We can decide 
we can think it and be like, okay, that's interesting. We can have curiosity around it. Um, and then we can decide like, maybe that's not true for me anymore. And that's, I found that to be so liberating to be like, oh, okay, maybe in the past I've told myself I have to show up in X, Y, or Z way, right? Or I held myself to this standard that was just like, exactly like you were saying, causing all this overwhelm and this stress and this anxiety because it was unattainable. Mm-hmm. The standard that I had set for myself and this idea that we can say like, oh, okay, like, yes, I recognize this thought pattern or this tendency to do that. Um, but now I have awareness around it. And now I'm going to choose to do it differently, right? I'm going to show up. I'm going to do it scared. Uh, I'm going to do it a little messy. <laughs> I'm going to kind of figure it out as I go. Um, but I love this idea that we can have a thought and we don't have to be like, we don't have to assume that every thought we have about ourselves is a fact, especially as we're in this kind of transition. I love how you say all the re's, right? Like mm-hmm. relearning and reprogramming and all of that. Like it takes time and it takes repetition. Like I've done a lot of work on mindset. I love, I love learning about mindset. I'm a total book nerd. Like I'm always reading something or listening to something. And I find that when I'm especially working on something around a mindset, I have to work on it over and over again. And like, you know, your brain is making these new neural pathways. And so it's not like we wake up one day and, and Rachel, I were like, oh, I'm the, co-, you know, I'm confident and empowered. And like, <laughs> I am the future me, right? It's this like subtle shift that happens, but these things that we do each day that reinforce the woman that we're growing into. And so Rachel, I'm curious to know, what are some of the things that really helped you on your journey of, of releasing that perfectionism and, and moving? Moving towards this more empowered, confident self, are there things that you do in your day to day that are are small or subtle shifts from who you were before that kind of accumulate over time? Yes. So the first thing that I did, um, and so I'll, I'll, it's kind of a two two part answer. The first part is I turn to writing. I love writing because it's a way for me just to to kind of just dump my thoughts, my emotions, the things that are happening and just give me that space where it's just out of it's out of my physical. And so now it just lives over there. Mm-hmm. And I've always been into writing. It's just a, a release to me. Um, some people are verbal communicators. I'm a writer communicator kind of person. And I was just writing and then through the natural progression of me saying yes to writing my book, which is so weird because I still remember saying no like a thousand times. <laughs> and I was like, who, me write a book? Like, are you insane? Like, this is not like, do you know me? Do you know my mess? Like, you want to air <laughs> my biz? But um, it was once I started saying yes to to writing my story and sharing it. And it was a way for me to begin my own healing process. Mm -hmm. Um, And as I was writing this, I remember talking to my coach about this. I had my my book writing coach at the time. And I said, her name is Kim. And I said, Kim, I'm really struggling here. Like I'm writing this, but I feel like I can't even, I don't even have words for it. it. I don't have the, the vocabulary to really harness and express my story to what I want to share and say. And she goes, that's natural. When you start owning your story, the voice will come after. And I remember that was such a powerful lesson. It was just a simple statement, but that really stuck with me all these years because she was so right. I had to get that story out. I had to own it. I had to release it. I had to let go of the shame and the guilt. And, you know, we all come with a past. We all have skeletons in our closet. We all have things that we've been carting around for us, whether a day or decades, right? And by allowing me to unpack that allowed the space for me to to process and heal. And in that, I started creating new habits, new, new ways of living that to be honest, it was trial and error. I had to try on a bunch of things that I learned from all these different experts and gurus and the this and the that. And that's why I always say like, you know, take everything with a grain of salt, try it on. If it fits you, cool. Keep it on as long as you want until it's no longer suitable for you. Mm -hmm. If you try it on, you're like, this does not feel good. Well, okay, first of all, challenge yourself. Why does it not feel good? Because there's a feel good that's like, this is painful, discomfort, this is so not me, versus this is discomfort, Mm -hmm. right? And that means, oh, I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. I can wear it, but it's not it's not cutting off like my lifeline. And so challenge yourself on that. And so don't be so quick to discard any of those uh, things that you do try. And so 
I started building up, like I said, through trial and error, giving it a go. And what I call now are my seven acts of, of self care. And so these are daily practices that I do every day. I strive for them. So mm-hmm. I'm not perfect. And I don't hit all seven every single day, but these are my anchors in my life. And these are part of my daily routine to my daily habits to how I actually show up. Mm -hmm. And so that comes from uh, my philosophies of getting fit from within. So that is movement. So finding, uh, finding movement and exercise that works best for you. Now, movement can be something as simple as going for a walk, or it could be something like for me, I love strength training. I'm in the gym. I, I lift my weights hard, but I also find a counterbalance to that by walking or yoga, something a little bit more gentle to um, feeding and fueling my, myself and also my mind, body, and soul with nutrient-dense foods to um, articles and, and podcasts and things that are just really constructive and not destructive. Um, they're uh, positive, reinforcing, encouraging, things like that, that really boost my entire existence. And so when we look at nutrition, typically 80, 20 of eating nutrient dense, rich foods, minimizing my process and treats and things like that, but I'm still giving myself that balance to finding ways to manage and combat stress as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And that's why I said about finding ways that you're not chasing, but you're more of the just being more, right? Instead of Mm -hmm. doing more, you're being more um, to getting quality and quantity of sleep. And I always shoot for Mm -hmm. seven to nine hours of sleep. And I know for those that might be listening, even on my podcast, I hate that hustle, the hustle culture, right? (laughs) Me personally, listen, I've hit burnout way too many times to say that I'm going back to this hustle. So I don't, I've really started implementing the season that I'm in now and just literally taking who I am, a human being, and I'm not a human doer, right? And so I'm experiencing more of the being. Um, So in the being, I get to experience more of gratitude, of self-love. So those are also foundational pillars in my in my process as well. Um, And then our, our gratitude, right? Having that a fond appreciation for everything in life because life is always working for us. It's teaching us something. It's showing us something. And even though we experience something that whether it's negative or in any context, which is like considered a bad, something bad happened to us, right? Those are experiences that if we take the time to flip the script on that and find the positive, the silver lining, the gain, whatever you want to call it from that bad or poor experience, there's always something to be learned. Mm -hmm. And with that knowledge is what you bring into your tool belt to take that next implied imperfect action step, because you just learned from something that didn't go your way to now using it for your toolbox and as to your advantage, to do something better about it, to make a difference, to change something. And so following those seven principles, um, the daily acts of self-care, that really does help ground me and keep me in uh, a place of presence Mm -hmm. versus feeling like I'm scrambling and running around and doing that hustle and grinding and all the stuff that you just see out there. And it's just, uh, to be honest, it's toxic. It's toxic Mm -hmm. if you don't have the insight or awareness of what to do with that information. And I think that that is the important part of it because it's just, it's ruminating in your mind. You just have become a consumer without a producer of what you've just consumed, right? It's Mm kind of like consuming all that food, right? And if you don't have the daily movements here, it just builds up, it builds up, it builds up, right? And eventually it feels like toxic in your body. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what it is. And so we have to be mindful of what we're doing with our lives. Like we can't just sleepwalk through life. Mm -hmm. So incorporating those, creating a foundation, showing up intentionally and living with on and for a purpose each day has really been something that helps me in this whole overall existence of mental, emotional, and spiritual health and well-being while then my physical becomes a byproduct of that inner work that I have done on myself. Yes. Oh, I love that so much. And I really appreciate this emphasis on taking care of the self, you know, responsibility for ourselves from the inside out. And this um, reminder to let go of that hustle. I feel like for the longest time, I was told, you know, just from like outside sources that my worth was weighed in my productivity. 
And mm. so, you know, I just kept going and going and going and going. And just like you, I have, I've had those seasons of burnout. And I also am at a point in life where I'm just like, mm -mm, I'm not here <laughs> for that. Like, I'm done with the burnout. I don't want to look like a mom zombie anymore or a mompreneur zombie as the case might be, right? And I really appreciate this emphasis on like going back to the basics and like, we don't need to overcomplicate things for ourselves. Like it is amazing what good sleep will do for you. And yes. my listeners know I've been on a mission since January of 2023. Uh, we were chatting before we hit record, Rachel and I about, I have little ones, they're four and five, five and a half. Can't forget that right now. <laughs> And one is a good sleeper, one is not. And I was like, you know what? Uh, we are going to all become good sleepers. And so we all have weighted blankets and blackout curtains and sound machines and nighttime routines. And it has been, it's been a profound impact for me of like, I'm an adult, but I was like, I think I need to parent myself a little bit here and be like, all right, Kate, you need a bedtime routine. And so now instead of staying up late and watching TV and eating the Cheez-Its, which like no shame in that game. Like I love watching me a little bachelorette having a good snack. Right. But it doesn't need to be an every night kind of thing. Right. Cause what you do like day to day, like that is what your life becomes. Right. And I want that to be a, like something that I look forward to once a week. But the rest of the nights, like I look forward now to going to bed early. Like mm -hmm. I've gotten back into reading fiction. Like I've gone into like the romanticy, like fiction, romantic fantasy. It's been so fun, like totally unexpected. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna read some books for fun. And like I'm gonna buffer my personal growth books with a foot, like a just a frivolous fun read and I've been reading those books before bed and it helps my mind relax and I just feel so much more settled and grounded and when I lay down to go to sleep my brain isn't like the monkey chatter that's like constantly looping in my head and I was so proud of myself my apple watch told me the last like I think four out of the last five days I've hit my sleep goal and just like oh, you my nice. sleep goal is like eight hours it's aggressive <laughs> but mm -hmm. like I am a more patient parent. I'm a more present partner. And I'm just like a general better human being when I get good sleep. I love this idea of just like, maybe we don't have to hustle. Maybe we don't have to do it all. Our worth is definitely not equated to our productivity. And in fact, eliminating things from our schedules can be so powerful of like, the things that you feel like you should do or the things that you feel obligated to do, or even certain people who maybe are like, energy vampires, like how can we create some healthy boundaries and say no to things so that we can have that space, like you said, to just be a human being, right? Like there's mm -hmm. just something so nice in giving yourself permission to just be. <laughs> yeah. For me, that's been like a really beautiful thing of, of learn. I feel like I never really even learned that until I got to my thirties. <laughs> For sure. And it's, uh, it, to be honest, it's, it's kind of a, a heavy coat to wear because mm -hmm. you weren't used to it. And we've been in green, like you said, you know, our progress is a measuring stick of our self worth. And that's, you know, for me, it was chasing perfection, where, you know, you go to, to the end of the world to make things happen. But inside, you know, we could be chasing things, but inside, we're neglecting things, right? So if mm -hmm. we give all of our focus into one department of our life, then the other ones suffer. And that's what I found I was doing um, the first go around at it. Mm. I was so focused on how, for context with my book, it was really a horrible relationship with myself. Mm. And I didn't like the woman in the mirror. I didn't like anything about her because I saw everything about her. I knew her nooks and crannies, her deepest, darkest secrets. And I saw all that stuff. And I was just like, it's ugly. I don't even like that person. And so a constant reminder of myself was that woman in the mirror. And I, I fought so hard to not be her. And so I didn't have the insight that I have now. So I looked at it as like, how do I transform the outside? Because then I didn't understand the concept of inner personal growth. So I, my chase was about ridding my toxic relationship with my body. Mm -hmm. And I've always struggled for, for the, the whole upbringing in my life was like a struggle with body dysmorphia to eating disorders, mm -hmm. disordered eating to extreme workouts, exercise, all that stuff to self-image and self-esteem. And so I didn't want people to know that about me. And so that's where I 
projected this appearance of, oh, look at, oh my gosh, she has an incredible business and body and her marriage and everything. Oh my gosh, Rachel, how do you do that? And it was just like, I, I don't, I can't. You just watch, it's going to crumble. Mm-hmm. And it did. I hit my rock bottom um, years, a few years before I started writing that book and, you know, coming full circle and taking that information that I had learned, the knowledge um, that that I, I also had learned from just doing the work. And I found myself now in a different, similar, but yet different situation, vastly different. But I was catching myself repeating some of those old patterns and habits. And I was just like, Mm, the story sounds really familiar and I'm, I'm <laughs> sure I know how it's going to end. So at this time, I had the uh, the awareness at this point just to hit eject before I kind of self imploded. And that was a different season. And so now, you know, I'm finding myself maybe about six to nine months post kind of uh, crash and burn, but it was a whole different, I walked away kind of unscathed, unharmed kind of mm. aspect of it. But it took me going back again to the basics to say, okay, remember all these things, all these things that you've put in place. And I don't want to call them rules because I, I don't like rules. Rules are just not for me. Mm. Um, and so I have kind of just these loose boundaries that I govern to kind of corral me when I'm off track. I don't, I I'm a firm believer now in flexibility. Um, that's why as a perfectionist, we always had to have everything perfect, prim, proper. This is a straight line. Don't budget. Don't move it. Right. Don't smear it. And now it's just like, I just go. And it's Hmm. so freeing. And I don't say that from the context of like, I have no plan. I have no direction. No, not, not at all. I'm very intentional about everything I do. But it now stems from a different motive. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is important to really note for those that are like, I don't know my motive. Well, before we start taking those actions and and knowing the outcome of it, we got to question ourselves like, what what are we doing this for? Why are we doing this? What is the outcome we want to achieve? Who is the person I want to be? And start really just questioning yourself. And uh, as you had mentioned, Kate, earlier about getting curious, curiosity will keep that wonderment and also brings us back to some of that childlike behavior Mm -hmm. that we were so forced and so quick and ready to grow up, right? When we were kids, all we wanted to be was adults. We wanted to be the parents (laughs) and not be told what to do, right? When I grow up, right? How many times do we say that? And so (laughs) we were already setting the tone as kids. Like we don't want to be a kid anymore. We want to set the rules. We want to do the call the shots. But that curiosity and wonderment brings us back to that childlike behavior and mindset of, of what if, right? The possibilities and the creativity and the imagination and the fun and the joy and just the freedom that that brings. And that's a place that I felt was really missing in my life. And now I get to be a grown adult living a kid carefree life, but also enough insight and knowledge to parent the crap out of myself, but also recognizing, hey, Rachel, go play, go have fun, go do the things because that lights you up. And if you're not giving yourself that fun side and that permission to go do, then how are you showing up in those other areas of your life, right? So kind of what I went back to is if you're so focused on one, the other suffer. Mm -hmm. And so now giving yourself that balance, balance and moderation to dabble in the things. And while you're doing it, you're simultaneously growing in those areas as well. Yeah, I love that. Well, it's this really holistic picture of life, Mm -hmm. right? And for me as like a health and empowerment coach, I really do. I think about the whole picture and it reminds me of when I was doing my undergrad, I was a fine arts major. I love to paint and painting is like when you talk about like play, like any kind of artistic thing is like my happy place. When I studied abroad in the South of France, I was really fortunate. I got to study abroad for a semester um, and my art professor there, I would work on one little corner of the painting. And then I would move up a little bit and then and I would bring it all the way to fruition. And I remember my professor Alan coming over and saying like, well, Kate, like the different parts of the painting, they all talk to each other. They all inform one another. So the color you choose here informs the color that you choose here. And it impacts the painting as a whole. And he was like, what if instead of doing just the bottom left corner and then working out from there. What if you brought the entire painting up as a whole? What if you worked over here and then over here and then over here? It was this really pivotal moment for me in my artistic journey because when I started to paint that way and I started to create as a whole, 
my paintings were so much more dynamic and just visually interesting. And, and they, the different parts of the painting spoke to one another. They related to one another instead of it being like, well, here's the corner I did when it was sunny outside and here's the corner, you know, and I felt the previous way was much more disjointed. And I, in so many ways, I feel like life is the same way, right? It's we're we're bringing everything up as a whole. It's almost like that idea of like a rising tide lifts all boats, right? Like you start to nurture your inner self, right? You're working on your self-love practices, you're nurturing your mindset, like we're, we're letting go of the perfectionism, right? Like it's a whole thing. And then it starts to reflect on the outside, like you said, Rachel, like the physical health and wellness, right? And we're, and we're leaning into those, those seven habits that you have. And it's like the whole picture comes into focus all at once sometimes because it's this rising tide um, and everything is elevated with all these little things that we're nurturing along the way. And so for me, I find that to be very freeing. It's like you don't have to jump in to the nth degree in this one thing. We can just nurture a little bit of everything and keep moving and keep going. And I appreciate too a lot of what I hear you saying is the seasonality of life, right? Like this idea of picking something up, as you said, and trying it on and like, does this feel good? Or like, does this still feel good? Right. And sometimes the things like I used to have this beautiful morning routine, right? And I would do my gratitude practice and my meditation and all these things. And then I have kids <laughs> and two dogs and I love having kids and having dogs. And um, my partner, my husband is like an incredible co-parent, right? But my morning routine has shifted over the years, right? Because like now we're in a season of like, well, we get up and we like, we've got school, right? So now my morning routine is more at like 9am instead of at 6am. And and there's nothing wrong with that, right? We have to have this kind of fluidity or this elasticity. And a lot of what I hear and what you share too, is this idea that you know, we can have a goal, we can have something that we're working towards, but maybe it doesn't have to be that one way to reach it, right? Like you were saying, this perfection line of like, this is the, like, we can't deviate from it. This is the only way to do it. The older I get, and the more I just grow as a person, and and even as a business owner, it's this idea that like, there are so many different ways to arrive at the destination we have in mind. And heck, maybe the destination even changes a little bit, and we end up somewhere Mm -hmm even cooler than we had anticipated, right? And so much of that just comes from taking that imperfect action. So Rachel, what do you do like in your own personal life when you are like, all right, I'm feeling a little stuck or I'm feeling like maybe I'm falling into this hustling again, or I'm not sure what the next right step is. What are some things that help you get back in alignment with yourself or back in touch with yourself? That's a great question because actually this is a prime example and like season that I'm in too, because, you know, as I kind of just came off one of, to be like full transparency, I just came off one of my hardest years mm-hmm. and it was just filled with a lot of grief and loss and, you know, loss pieces of myself and my identity. And it was just about now as I've come through that, like rediscovering and I'm in this rebuild phase. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like, okay, we just watched everything kind of fall apart and now sorting through the pieces that I want to carry on and forward into this new new chapter that I'm embarking on. And as I was sifting through these pieces, I said, okay, usually I would say, well, who do I want to become at that point? Mm-hmm. I had to do a whole lot of healing in the, in the time, but it was about picking up the pieces that still felt good to me that also brought me joy in some of the hardest and darkest season or moments. And said, if these are the pieces that I want to carry with me into this new chapter and rebuild myself, my business, my life, my everything, right? Then who do I have to be at that point? Mm -hmm. And I kind of took that reverse approach because I, at that point, needed something that still held as reminders of who I was Mm -hmm. and encouragement of who I'm becoming and where I'm going. And so in this season, to kind of help hold that, you know, I still... I'm experiencing that like, okay, we got to get things done because we have deadlines, we have timelines, we have projects, right? So we're on this whole rebuild now. And if you're ever into the building of a business, you realize that things don't always go to plan. And so sometimes as a default, my old ways will say, Ooh, you guys stay up till like 4 a.m. You got to grind this out. You got to hustle. And, and, you know, some of the former coaches and mentors that I had, I hear their voices. And one of them is like screaming loudly. And, and it was like, how bad do you want this? If you are not sleeping less than four hours of sleep, you're not working hard enough and you shouldn't even go to the gym. You shouldn't even have friends and fun and any of this stuff because this is your business is your life. And I was like, you know, when I was young and impressionable, I was like, 
she's really, she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> and then there was this time in my life here in this current season where that voice piped up and I said, Mm-mm, that's what helped get me to where I was. Mm-hmm. That's what helped break me because that wasn't sustainable. That's not healthy. Go back, Rachel, to your pillars. Go back to your beliefs. Go back to the foundations, the values, the principles, what you stand for, what your goal is. And I had to do my own pep talk. Mm -hmm. I had to be my own cheerleader and my own advocate and self-reminders. So, you know, thinking that people may or may not know what is best for you, again, take that with a grain of salt, listen to them because there might be some weight to it, but there could also be like, whoa, that was them speaking about their own business building and what worked for them doesn't mean it's suitable or practical for you. In this this season and realizing all the poor advice and taking in some of the good advice and counterbalancing that, that's where I started stepping up my sleep game too. And I was just like, listen, I know where I'm at my best. I know my brain is not going to work when it's foggy, when it's clouded, when it hasn't had sleep, when all it's thinking about is do, 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 go, go, go. Mm-hmm. It's just not sustainable. So in this season, it's a lot of pep talking. It's a lot of reminders. It's a lot of corralling, but it's not as frequent or as often because I've already kind of set that tone and you guide them similar to, I would assume, you know, when you're teaching your child how to ride the bike, right? You're, you're holding onto the bike lightly, lightly, and eventually your hands off because you're watching your child soar on the bike. And that's sometimes the parenting that I have to do to myself. Mm, oh yes, that's such a great reminder too of the, the times when you're like, okay, maybe if I just don't hold on so tight, like maybe I can just relax and like take a breath and give myself some space. Like the ease starts to follow. Yeah, you're so mm. right. It it was so fun. so my oldest learned how to ride a bike this summer. My youngest too, for the most part. He's just like he's less into it. He's just like I'd rather walk. <laughs> <laughs> and there is there's something really cool as a parent watching your child like learn how to do something that used to scare them. Right. And my, my oldest, Oh, he looked like he was going to like battle. He'd have elbow pads and wrist pads and knee pads, like all the pads, right. He always wears his helmet, but we had like all the pads <laughs> and now he's down to his helmet and, and he's good to go from there. Right. And he still t- like tumbles over sometimes, but he hops back on his bike and we keep going. And it's just such a beautiful reminder. Cause I think sometimes as an adult, you know, we can get kind of stuck in our ways. And especially if we haven't had that moment of like, where we have to kind of shake things up for ourselves, we forget to try new things, right? And I think there's something really cool in in seeing children try something new for the first time and reminding us like, we can keep learning and we can keep growing and, and to give ourselves permission to keep evolving, right? Like sometimes I feel like we have this idea that like, we have this one purpose or this one thing, right? And Like, what if that can even ebb and flow as we go through our lives and we enter these different seasons? And yeah, I feel like just being a little less rigid and just giving ourselves that permission to explore and that curiosity, right? I love how you talk about that childlike curiosity is just, there's so much goodness there. If we can just be kind to ourselves and I think it's Brene Brown says to speak to yourself the way that you would to a friend. And when I find myself, like you were saying with that, that past coach in your head and you're like, oh my gosh, like, would I ever speak to my friend? Would I ever say that to Rachel? Like, no. So like, why am I telling that to myself? Right. And so there's this beautiful thing that happens when we can create that awareness and then, and then not to be hard on ourselves when that inner, like we just studied the inner critic and the inner coach in my, my group coaching program. And sometimes we can be so hard on ourselves when we hear that inner critic come back and we're like, oh gosh, there, there she is again. Um, mine's named Brad. I don't (laughs) know. I don't know why, but <laughs> when I hear my inner critic, I'm like, Brad, get out of here, man. Like, I don't want you in my head. And instead of being hard on myself and being like, oh, gosh, here we go again, Kate. Like, you suck. Like, why are we back in this old thought pattern? I'm just like, oh, hey, Brad. Like, how interesting that you showed up right now. Like, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> like, I'm going to tune into my inner coach instead, right? Into this, like, wiser, kinder version of myself. And yeah, I think there's just, there's so much value in tuning in with ourselves and tuning out of the expectations and the pressure and yeah, letting ourselves just be a little messy sometimes as we figure things out. Cause I think like, ultimately, at least for me, I'm always, I'm just figuring it out as I go. <laughs> and it's never oh, we perfect, all are, right? It's never perfect. It's never polished. And, and once you can let go of that, that 
desire for it to look perfect. It's like, it's just so much more freeing. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's crazy when we can let that go and, and not realize that we're not bothered by some of the stuff that we should just stress over. And I, I like to use that as kind of like measuring sticks of my own progress. I'm like, okay, there's stuff around the house. And I didn't freak out that I have to step over things or clean up. And, and it was just, you know, you recognize your own growth because it's like life is too short to just Mm -hmm. complain and stress and do the stuff that doesn't bring you the joy or the outcome of what you want. And I know that there's seasons where you just have to endure some of that suck, Mm -hmm. but when that suck becomes your life, you've gone too far in that direction. And it, and sometimes it could be hard to pull back from that because that's all you've known at this point for that period. And so pulling back would mean that you have to give up pieces, right? Maybe you're giving up your time, giving up your energy, giving up a relationship, maybe giving up even a, a dream, but it doesn't mean that that's entirely forever. It could just be a pause mm-hmm. until you've kind of done some of that process. Really, like, okay. Sometimes we went too far, too quick, and too hard. Mm-hmm. But let's give us that break and permission to really pull it back and just be grateful for that lesson mm-hmm. and how you can do things differently now. Yeah. Oh, I love that, Rachel. So, my question for you is for the for someone who's listening to this episode on either of our shows, I'm so excited to draw <laughs> these episodes together. For the person who's listening and they're like, yes, like I am just ready to start rebuilding, reprogramming, creating that awareness, releasing the perfection, just moving forward. But maybe they feel a little nervous, a little trepidatious. Maybe they're worried about what others might think. What is like that word of advice that you wish someone could have given you when you were in that season? Like, what is it that, what's that thing, that encouragement that you can lend today? It's that everything you need is found within. And I think that that is so important. There was something that, like I said, I was an external chaser Mm -hmm. and thought that all that stuff that I wanted to fill voids that were longing inside is the quest that, that I would can just like somehow go out and get it. We can find happiness on Amazon and get there in two hours, right? <laughs> we can we can find the love of our life, you know, if we just scroll on the next dating app, right? Mm-hmm. So all these things were just taught to us to be externally at our disposal and not really appreciate, one, the things that we do get, two, the work that it took to recognize that, but three, the individual who you need to be to really receive what it is that you want. So Mm -hmm. like, for example, finding the love of your life, right? You're not going to find it on the next dating app. If you still have to unpack years worth of poor relationships or not feeling that you're loved by others, or, you know, really, how is that relationship with yourself? So everything that we want is a mirror reflection of who we Mm -hmm. are on the outside. So we have to do that inner work. And that's why I say nothing externally is ever going to fill a void internally. We have to do that. That is a singular job that only you can do. And so when we recognize that you're responsible for your entire existence here, things that happen to you, yes, that's the past. We don't live there. And the things that are happening for you are the lessons that you learn from those experiences in the here and now in the present will now be tools and assets for you as you create this future version of yourself here in the present moment. So being in the present has created the, probably one of the biggest lessons for me. And this is an area that I continue to work on for myself, but also the space that I try to intentionally live every single day, day by day, And it's hard. It is very hard for somebody who is perfection driven, chasing something that I truly believe in and and am very passionate about, but also knowing when to pull back because I can sense what is happening internally. But I don't think that if I didn't have the relationship I have with myself, I wouldn't know that I have these check engine lights coming on. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what I think for any of us that are listening, it's like really become your, your very best as a friend, Mm -hmm. get to know you, get intimate with you, know your deepest, darkest secrets, know what makes you tick, what lights you up, know what drives you. Right. And so when you can really get to know yourself, you start to really spend, I mean, that's who you spend the most time with anyway. Mm -hmm. 
So get to know yourself and develop a healthy, thriving relationship that will start blossoming in every facet and everything that you go out there and touch in in this world, from the relationships to your business, to your ventures, to your future, to whatever that looks like for you. Um, I think that that is one of the biggest lessons that I've learned and continue to learn because that's what life is, always showing up and teaching you the same dang lesson over and over again <laughs> just in a different it's colored different it's packaged different you're like oh what's inside this box same lesson <laughs> so, <laughs> so i think that that's just you know we're we're going to see a lot of repeats in our life and they're there intentionally for you to learn mm-hmm. and then once you learn it it doesn't continue showing up as the way it did before yeah i love that i think to piggyback off of that i the thing that i would add to that is like i love this focus on like the self right and like loving yourself, getting to know yourself, embracing yourself, like the, all, all the different pieces. Right. And then for me, another, that has, that's been so crucial and so foundational. And then another piece that's really helped me is being really purposeful in the community that I choose to be in. Right. Like what podcasts am I listening to? What books am I reading? Like who's my mentor, whether they know I exist or not. Right. Like I totally have mentors where I've read all their books and I'm like, Mel Robbins doesn't know me, but like I've learned a lot from her. <laughs> yeah. Um, being in in coaching programs with other women um, who are choosing on the Live by Design podcast, we're all about living by design and not by default, right? And so choosing to surround myself with women like you, Rachel, and women who are in our in both of our communities who are choosing to be really purposeful and really intentional. And, and I find so much value in that for the times when. I start to doubt myself or I start to feel a little lost or I'm like, I think I'm losing my way a little bit. (laughs) I need a little bit of a course correction. It's so nice to be able to not only tune in with yourself, but then to reach out to these women and, and find that encouragement and that support. And, and like you said, at the very beginning of this conversation, like if we can help just one person avoid the burnout and the crash and burns that we've gone through, like, that's why I show up and do what I do, right? Is I don't want women to have to get to the point that I was at where I was so unhappy and unfulfilled and I didn't know how to fix it, you know? And and then I finally realized like, oh, I'm the only person who can change this for myself, right? Um, But to get to be in community with others who are choosing to live with intention is just so beautiful and allows you to kind of link arms with one another or to take the hand of somebody who's a couple steps ahead of you. I find that to be so helpful too, to listen to women on their podcasts and their shows like yours, where I can listen and be like, okay, she's a few steps ahead of me in this area. Let me learn from her. Let me like let her reach her hand up virtually and, and guide me, right? There's just something beautiful about getting to know yourself and then being really purposeful with what you curate around you. Because what you put into your mind and into your heart is just as important as what you're eating even. It's you're feeding yourself, but just in a different way. And so, Rach, I'm just so grateful for the way that you show up in this world, the way that you share so vulnerably and so openly. For anyone who's listening, I know you have something really special in this confidence booster bundle. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I know at least for my community, when they listen to this, um, we love actionable things, right? Like so much of what we talk about is kind of intangible, right? And it's like, okay, well, what's the actual, how do we do this, right? And that comes back to, you know, your the seven things, your anchors and all of that. But can you tell us about this confidence booster bundle? Because I am all in for boosting my confidence. <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So our, the confident woman, so that obviously that's our brand. And so like, how do we become the version of the confident woman for ourselves? Right. And so, you know, the confidence booster bundle does that. It helps guide you to creating, you know, boosting your confidence to cultivating self love to feeling the innermost depths of who you are. And so with our booster bundle, it's a, three parts uh, journals. And so some of them are self-guided, some of them are more of the affirmations, and some of them are very deep reflective. And so having all three pieces, so for example, we have a guide to Mm self-love. And in that guide, we get to learn about how to embrace our strengths, our weaknesses, and really develop a confident mindset. And then we also have our 20 ways to boost your confidence, which are just 20 tips to really bring awareness to, you know, empower that woman to recognize 
these areas in her life, take responsibility, and just really start to develop a growth mindset so that they can start becoming more confident. And then, of course, we have the 30 days to creating Confidently You. And that is a a 30-day guided journal with uh, exercises, prompts, self-reflection questions to really get that individual on that deeper level where they can start exploring more about themselves and develop that relationship very similar to what I've shared about my own journey. Like I had to do that work. I had to ask myself these questions. And I know there's so many like books and guides out there and you always say like, okay, ask your grandpa this and ask your mom this. And those questions are still applicable. Like ask yourself these questions, but when you do the work, be very intentional and mindful. And maybe here's just a little tip. If you're not sure about what to write and your mind wants to go to some of that, oh yeah, remember you did X, Y, and Z, speak that out loud. When you start speaking things out loud, it sounds so different than what you've programmed to just listen and tune to that negative inner critic. So if your Brad starts piping up Mm -hmm. and you say, quiet Brad, let me speak over it. And so now as you use your own voice, you're like, oh, that sounded way different. I would never speak to my friend about that. So why would I speak to myself about that? And so you recognize the words that are coming out of your mouth. And I think that this is so important as also a lesson as to how we treat others, right? Mm. So if we're tasting those words and they taste like poison and they're coming out of us, well, what else are we putting out, right? Because that toxicity is living inside of us. And if we don't find a way to release it, to expel it, to heal it, to just get rid of it, it's going to come out in all those areas of our life. And so really with the Confidence Booster Bundle, it helps employ those tools and tips and strategies so that you can recognize this before it gets ahead of you and you find yourself back in your old ways that, to be honest, aren't really conducive. They're not Mm -hmm. empowering you to become that best and most confident self. And maybe they are in certain areas, which, you know, is only up to you to uniquely define that for yourself. But, you know, doing that inner work really has a lot of outer rewards to show for it. So that chase, the chase is inside the external. Those are the rewards. Those are the fruits of your labor. So definitely dive deep, get to know yourself, explore, and you'll start showing up differently and watching your relationships, your business, your life, your dreams start to take fold too. Mm, I get like good goosebumps as you share about that. I can't wait to dive into the journal prompts. I'm a total journaler as well. Like writing is my happy place. Like it's one of my Mm -hmm. happy places. It's just a place where you can just not be judgmental of yourself, go back to that curiosity, that kindness, and sometimes just getting it out of your head. Um, Whether you say it out loud, you speak it out loud, you write it just helps clear things, right? It always helps. I always feel like I have a little bit more clarity when I come away from like a really good journaling session, let alone 30 days of journaling. So I am I'm excited to dive into that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And I pull out of this from my own experience, but I also pull a lot of it too from my writer's passion. Like I love writing about this. And so come across many people who are like, I absolutely love journaling. I love writing. And then there's those who are, are like, I don't, writing's not my jam. Mm-hmm. And believe me, if this isn't your jam, and you're like, I'm not going to download this because I don't write. You don't have to. They're just there as guides, to their prompts. And what I found for even me sometimes when I'm like, I don't want to write. My hand's cramped or I'm on the go mm-hmm. or whatever. I do a lot of uh, voice memos. And so for me, that's my verbal journal. It's just another way to express and get that out of your existence, your body, right? So for those that are like, I don't write, do a voice memo. Keep like a vlog or... If you don't want to listen to yourself back on audio, there's so many tools now, even on our apps that you can do a voice to text. Mm -hmm. So just speak it in there and save your time, you know, having to transcribe your audio later or having to sit down and write it later. So, so many different just ways to go about doing it. But again, don't discount something just because you didn't like it or that's not you. Mm -hmm. Try a different alternative to it, but don't just be so quick to discard something. Oh, I love that so much. And to piggyback off of that, I would love to offer our listeners for both of our communities. Um, I have a pursue your purpose masterclass. And so, so much of what we talked about today, you know, whether it's our values or the perfectionism always, <laughs> or the direction we want to head with our lives or this idea of, of seasonality and not holding onto things quite so tightly and taking messy action. Those are all things we talk about in this masterclass. And so if you use code confident woman, and I'll put the link below in the show notes, you can get that for free. It's a $97 course, but I just want to gift it to everybody. I feel like there's so many of us who hold ourselves to this impossible standard. And sometimes 
It's like our purpose, our quote purpose. You guys can't see me, but I'm using air quotes. And purpose can feel kind of scary or daunting, or maybe we feel like we're already behind or we're comparing ourselves to others and what their journey looks like. And we feel like we don't compare, we don't measure up. And I'm just here to dispel a lot of that. <laughs> Let's make purpose a lot less scary and a lot more easy and fun to pursue and give ourselves permission to have a different purpose in different seasons of life or to pursue more than one purpose at one time. So um, confident woman will be your code to get that, but we'll put links to both the confidence booster bundle and the pursue your purpose masterclass below. And friends, I just encourage you to hop in there. Rachel has such a beautiful heart for serving and supporting others. And I like, I cannot wait to dive into your journal prompts because I know that they're just going to be so impactful and I'm so grateful for the way that you just show up and share in this world, Rachel. So thank you so much for like this time together. I have like pinch me moments. So I'm like, I can't believe this is what I get to do is have conversations with women like you. So thank you. Yes. And likewise, thank you. This has just uh, been an incredible conversation. And, you know, this is our first time meeting and this has just been how, again, part of th- what we teach you guys in, in our programs, in our courses, in our work and everything is, I'm sure if you had met us 10, 15, even five years ago, we would have been completely different and we would have shown up. But I love that you brought this ease and this gentleness with you. And and it translates where I could feel that on this side of the video camera. And it's this easiness to talk to others that really have done the work. So I commend you, Kate, because this just this this conversation has been inspiring. It's encouraging even for me. And just thank you, you for holding this space and making this possible. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Rach. Hey there. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Confident Woman Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode as much as I did, please be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Thanks again for listening. 